So first of all, you all received my exam, am I correct? You received my exam, you know when it's due and you understand how to submit it, correct? You all read the instructions. Now I, I underlined in red, in hope that it reminds you that uh, uh, guys, if you do not submit it in one file, if you do not title it correctly, if anything, then minus 10 points. Yes? We understand each other? One file, PDF. In your case, you, you write E, last name, first name, exam one on the same form of the exam. If you do not have a scanner, you can take pictures and stick them onto Word, stretch them, make them look nice, and, uh, and then make Word to PDF conversion or any other way you like, but it's PDF, one file, E, last name, first name, exam one. Agreed? Beautiful. Yes, it is the workspace. You can include more workspace if you need to, right? You can do that, I suppose. You can print it, type it, write it, include more workspace, doesn't matter, right? But the exam should be in the same order in one file. Good. So I want to see also question one before question two. Question three before question four. I want them all in order, okay? Good, understood? Yes, E, first name, last name. Don't worry guys, you can ask me afterwards if, you, if it's okay, but submit the file, try to submit it right away correctly. Good. It's due on April 29th, if it's, my God, if something terrible happens, I don't know, right? You're chasing your cat, it's on the street, what not. You can submit it the next day, but you know, that's not the worst. But, but, but the file will be the same format as I ask. Understood? Okay, we're still having people join. And finally, they have joined, more or less. All right, guys. So uh, I suppose we have 27 people and let's take uh, class photograph for attendance. For now you can say cheese. If I get angry, you would be saying Käse, which is German for cheese. Okay. Wonderful. So where have we stopped the class guys? Do you remember we talked about logarithms? Logarithms are what? Guys, would anybody care to remind me what is the idea of log base A, B? What is this uh, saying? Okay, so uh, here is, guys, write a bit more, let's say, and then uh, uh, what is the sentence? What is that uh, saying? To me, this is saying I am the unique number. that gives B once placed over A, which means that A to the power of log base A of B is equal to B. Thank you. 
You understand why, guys? So this is just pure uh, black box for us. It is uh, the vial of Alice in Wonderland with a tag, drink, and you get small. So if you follow that uh, instructions, the prescription on the tag, this is what's supposed to happen. Okay, so it's very, very similar, guys. So this is not telling us how to calculate log base A of X, uh, just name. Now, well, uh, Safa, A to the power of B is entirely different, right? A to the power of B means, uh, means multiply A by itself B times, if even that is making sense. Because for instance, I can multiply A by itself, let's say three times, so that means A times A times A, but what does it mean to multiply A by itself uh, pi times? How do I multiply A by itself pi times? So the definition is rather weak and rather um, incoherent, right? But, but at least you see, so, so A to the power of B, even if it makes sense, it's very different from uh, uh, the power that I need to adjust uh, A by to get the number B. Yes, great, Dauda, I am very happy. It is your favorite thing. And guys, it's very similar. Logarithm, it's very similar. So functions like log base A of X, uh, very similar to uh, the idea of root of something, right? So for example, if you solved X squared equal to four, remember we said the solutions are plus minus two. But if you are solving x squared equal to two, the solution that you report is plus minus root two. And you see the number two seems familiar to us. I mean, we can kind of recognize it, but what is root two, right? Most of you are not able, I presume, instantly to tell me what is root two, right? By, uh, by its very essence, root two is simply the number, the unique, positive number uh, that becomes becomes two upon squaring. You see, it doesn't seem that by giving this notation, we have advanced anymore by saying uh, it's the number that satisfies X squared equal to two. Do you understand what I'm saying? In some sense, I have cheated and not solved the equation. In some sense, I have not given that number. And uh, especially if you read the Old Testament, guys, do you remember that story where uh, all the animals are paraded before Abraham, sorry, not before Abraham, before, I just looked at Abraham, before Adam, and uh, he named them. Could you tell me what's the purpose of naming the animals? Because it defines their purpose. Like he, he didn't just name, he knew what each animal was, I guess, destined to do. So he named it specific, he gave a specific name for each specific animal. Perhaps he knew what the animals are destined. My, my assumption is uh, different, you see. My interpretation is, uh, already for you know ancient people believed that if you correctly name something you have control over that something and it is not entirely wrong belief if you are naming something uh, then you are able to manipulate it yes you are able to manipulate it you are able to control it and how is that helping us uh, with the roots guys well, as soon as I understand the properties that roots satisfy, I am able to, in fact, come up with a way to figure out what root of two is, right? I, I can calculate roots. Naming is the first step in understanding the property and in, in, in uh, having some sort of way of thinking about the object. So guys, do you remember, for instance, how calculus allows us to uh, very quickly figure out roots? 
because remember what calculus is doing. The purpose of calculus is uh, like the purpose of Lego block constructions, right? It's to build up some, uh, some complicated operation out of uh, a sequence of very simple operations. Yes? So for instance, uh, there is one nice way to calculate uh, root of two, which you, I hope, remember. I taught you that. Uh, it was uh, one plus root two minus one. And uh, uh, by multiplying by conjugate, that becomes one plus one over two plus root two minus one, which I can then just recursively. So this entire thing is this fraction. So then recursively, I see that root of two is one plus one over two plus one over two plus one over two, et cetera. That allows you, uh, that's called continued fraction approximation. I say for that continued fraction approximation, uh, root of two is just the number one plus, which you can represent as two, 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 two. In this case, it looks like a rational number. Another idea also involving infinity is, as I taught you, how do you approximate e to the x? Do you remember? You remember how we figured out that, that e to the x is in terms of polynomials. e to the x in terms of polynomials is one plus x plus one half x squared plus one over six x cubed and so on. Yes? So uh, that, uh, in other words, I, I'm able to digest or understand how this function is processing the inputs because polynomials are the processes that I understand best of all. I can do the same thing guys for roots. Look at it, what is going, and that's up to you to decide how to do that guys. If I take root of one plus X and I represent this to be a zero plus a one X plus a two X squared plus a three X cubed and so on. This is called uh, infinite polynomial representation, more precisely power series representation. That's the language they use in mathematics, but really infinite polynomial representation. Do you understand why I want an infinite polynomial representation, guys? Roots never disappear under derivatives, which means a root cannot be simulated by a finite polynomial. It's just a symbol which, where I'm not clear how to carry the operation. But, uh, uh, but having uh, found this, 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 this situation, look at it, I can see that if I plug in x equal to zero, x equal to zero will eliminate all the other x's. I have that a zero is equal to one, right? A zero is equal to one. I can take derivatives of the polynomial and derivatives of the um, left side and uh, obtain the coefficients everywhere. And that's of course, if you're interested, just uh, try to play with it. One of your um, assignments is to figure out, extra credit assignments is to figure out the representation for sine and, and uh, cosine. How are those functions calculating? So what is the root of one plus uh, X? You would, have, you would figure out guys, if you uh, spend some time thinking about it, that A sub N is equal to one half times uh, minus one half times minus three halves, all the way to times uh, one half minus n plus one, divided by, <clears throat> divided by n factorial. That will be the coefficient, which means that, uh, that this function guys, and by the way, the reason I do not uh, take root of X by take something like one plus root of X, uh, one plus X in, under the root is because root of X is not differentiable at zero. You understand? Zero is a point of non-differentiability for the root. So I modify it slightly. So for instance, what can I then see? I see that for instance, one plus X is equal to, according to this, it's equal to one plus, one half X plus one half 
minus one half over two x squared plus one half minus one half minus three halves over six x cubed etc you see etc it's very easy guys you see if you think spend if you understood the idea of how we obtain e to the x you can very quickly just utilize that idea to figure how to calculate all sorts of uh, operations now look what that means guys well how can i calculate for instance root of two so notice that root of two can be thought of as root of four minus two you agree? And I can factor out the four. So it's root of four, one minus uh, one half, which it's the same then as two multiplied by root of one plus minus one half, which according to my approximation is two multiplied by one plus Two multiplied by one plus um, one half minus one half plus one half minus one half over two minus one half squared plus uh, one half minus one half minus three halves over six minus one half cubed. Now, if I, and, and then onwards, right? If I simplify it, what do I get? I get that uh, this is two minus, look at it, minus one quarter, right? Uh, and then what do we have here? This is uh, one half, one half, uh, or let's even even call it. Let's keep it as uh, simply one, one minus one half squared. And then we have uh, this times this times this, and uh, the, this two is crossed out. So uh, this becomes uh, one half to the power of four. So it's plus, right? So this is uh, no, this is, a, this is squared. So it's it's minus one half minus one half to the power of four. And then what do we have here? We have two multiplied uh, divided by, by six and there is an extra three here. So it is uh, one half, one half, one half. Uh, it's one half to the six. One after the six, and then we just need to verify whether it's negative or positive. So it's positive here and negative. So it's like this, right? We have two, and then this is this is negative. So it's this, and then this is just an approximation, right? Let's see by this approximation where I just uh, had it two, four, and six. Let's see what the calculator is telling us the answer then is, right? If, if this is my approximation, you can actually decide how to carry the approximation to make it uh, give you any number of digits. So what do you get? You see two minus 0.5 squared minus 0.5 to the power of four minus 0.5 to the power of six. Somewhere I made a mistake, but uh, do you see where I made a mistake? Mm, I don't know. So somewhere, somewhere in this uh, silly calculation, I, I made a mistake. You can correct it, okay? 
you can correct it, it's not uh, hard. In the morning, I did not make a mistake, but now I guess I have, I'm not sure where. Uh, so I will continue. Good? Too bad, I wanted to, I'm not sure how impressed or not, guys, the idea, do you understand the idea? If you, are, if you think uh, um, in calculus, you can very easily understand many, many functions. Fair? Would you be able to reconstruct this? Uh, would you be able to come up with such a polynomial? I hope you would be. It, it takes a few seconds. If you understand how that's supposed to work, you can make it, you can generalize it to uh, right away in all the formula. So you don't have to think again every time. <clears throat> so, We were studying the properties of logarithms, guys. Do you remember those properties? So uh, we are saying that logarithm base A of a number is supposed to be the unique power that when placed over the number will give you, so in other words, if the number is A, so uh, log base A of M times N means that if you place this expression over A, you will get M multiplied by N. And this is how we are using that to verify properties of logarithm. Yes? So a to the power of log base a of mn will be mn. You agree? And then what is m? m can be written as a to the power of log base a of m. And n can be written as a to the power of log base a of n. So that when I multiply those two numbers by the property of uh, the summation of powers, I get a to the power of sum of powers. Now, do you see that uh, that means that a to one power is equal to a to a power expressed with a different number. Now I use this idea that it's supposed to be unique power. There is only one power that would work in the real number sense. So then I see that uh, for all positive numbers m and n, log base a of m n is going to be equal to log base a of m plus log base a of n. Do you understand uh, what how I uh, argued for it, guys? I made a very important assumption, which is true for real numbers, but which is not true for complex numbers. You understand I'm introducing complex numbers there, but you have to understand that we're using here uh, existence and uniqueness. Okay, so for instance, if you, just a, a short deviation guys, short deviation, I hope hopefully an instructive one. Okay, I told you already that uh, in complex analysis, if you take the cube root of one, the answers are in fact uh, three possibilities. There are three numbers. There is the number uh, one, there is minus one half plus i times root three over two. And uh, there is, there is uh, minus one half minus i root three over two. The reason you notice the one half and root three over two are, are trigonometric identities. You can actually understand where that comes from if you understand how sine and cosine digest the inputs, okay? So you have this situation, but you also have the situation that for instance, if you take E squared, it will be the same as E to the power of two plus uh, I two pi. And in fact, it would be the same as E to the power of two plus I multiplied by seven times two pi for instance, right? So exponential powers are not unique. The exponential powers that produce the same number are not unique once you are stepping outside of real numbers, okay? So, so when you study anything, when you study this class, we, 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 this class study thoroughly begins with 
a thorough understanding of what real numbers are, what are their build of, what properties they have. So how can I be sure that, uh, that logarithms uh, exist and make sense in the same way that, uh, that, uh, that this theorem is supposed to promise me? The easiest uh, uh, logarithm to verify is that for e to the x. So we have e to the x, that's, that's the exponential function, guys, yes? And the exponential function, according uh, to our uh, polynomial representation, is 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared plus 1, third, one, one over 3 factorial x cubed, and so on. I hope you understand how you obtain that. In particular, if x is bigger than uh, zero, then e to the power of x is bigger than x. Do you agree? I just isolated uh, x for comparison. Which in particular tells me what? That's a, that's a sort of uh, a version of squeeze theorem, guys. That if I take limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x, that would be bigger or equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x. And what is that limit? That limit is infinity, which means that e to the x grows without bound. Yes? e to the x grows without bound. Somebody, it seems, is poisoning themselves with gas. Not to listen to that. <clears throat> so this is infinity, guys. Do you understand my calculation so far? Now, what do I know, guys, uh, about the other direction? So, so let's let's first of all uh, see. If X is positive, if X is positive, then we know that the derivative of E to the X is E to the X, yes? And by the formula that we had for it, of course, uh, it is, uh, because it's bigger than X, it means that uh, it's positive, yes? That means the slope of the graph, are, are the line segments that built up the E to the X graph are all pointing upwards. That means that my function e to the x is increasing. Do you understand what I mean increasing, guys? Because you look at the graph, the segments that build the graph are all pointing upwards. As I move to the right, they, I climb along those lines, which means the function is one-to-one. -one. So the implication is that e to the x is smaller than e to the y if x is smaller than y. You agree? Guys, are you following me? It's a sort of uh, rant, but it's a very, I'm hoping, enlightening rant. You see what I'm doing? I say e to the x is smaller than e to the y. If x is smaller than y, so the function is increasing. And what else do I see, guys? So I, I see that the graph is uh, something like this. So if this is uh, 1, the graph is increasing and increasing to infinity, which means that uh, if I want to find uh, how is e equal to n, look at it, you see? How is, when is e equal to some value n? Well, uh, I can definitely find a value because we go to infinity, I can some, uh, find some value x zero, that is, or maybe uh, x zero, so that the value is bigger than, uh, than, so that e to the x zero is bigger than n. Yes? So do you see what I can do, guys? So that now is the intermediate value theorem. By intermediate value theorem, there exists, that ex exists a solution, uh, x uh, where this is equal to n and this is unique x is unique 
take a moment to understand it. If the function is differentiable, it's continuous. By the fact that I know that limit goes to infinity, tells me that uh, I will be able to attain every value uh, bigger than one. You see, for, for a moment here, I calculated from zero onwards. So any value bigger than one, e to the x will equal to it for some unique x. Okay, so what I just verified by intermediate value theorem is that log base e of n exists for n bigger than or equal to one. In other words, the logarithm is unique. You understand there is only one power. You understand how I get it? Because the exponential is growing and once it hits the value, it never comes back because I verify that e to the x is increasing and also increasing to infinity. You see how I use intermediate value theorem, guys? That's what those things are more so useful for theoretically, right? So I just, although I do not know how to calculate logarithm of base E, this is the first logarithm that I'm convinced because of calculus that it makes perfect sense. It's unambiguous. Good. And you can carry out uh, the calculation in the other direction. How do you do that in the other direction? Now, now from here, it's the same thing, but here X is uh, negative. X is negative. Uh, Professor, yes. Just to be clear, uh, you're saying that because it's growing exponentially, it's growing to infinity. It's only going to hit the value n once. Is that yeah. what? You uh, well, well, uh, I don't even use the idea of growth exponentially. Uh, in other words, you see there is also the fact that I write e to the power of x. It's also misleading. The powers themselves. I mean, you have to understand what it means to take a number to any arbitrary power. You can use uh, a complete uh, just functional uh, theory to verify that there, there will be a function that, that that's e to the x and it behaves like an exponential for all values where you expect it to behave like an exponential. In other words, from some point of view, e to the x is the first exponential you've ever witnessed. The first uh, uh, function for which it, you understand what it means to raise it to any power. So for example, uh, what does it mean uh, uh, to take the, the number e and raise it to the power of pi? Right, if you just don't think, it means just one plus pi plus one half pi squared and onwards, you see? So it's very clear what to do in that case. What does it mean to take e to the power of three? That means one plus uh, three plus one half three squared and so on and so forth. But you would observe that uh, e to the three does happen to be e times e times e. Even though this is what you do, it is the same thing as doing that. And you can prove it. And I can show you how, if you're interested. I can show you how to do it in many ways. One of them using combinatorics, that's the most obvious and direct one, but you need to know combinatorics. The other is using calculus, you can verify that. So, I mean, it might be guys, what I'm saying slightly over your head, but uh, you, you understand, I just cannot have you frolic around and be unaware that you are jumping over precipice. I mean, mostly, you know, fool's luck. You will be jumping, you will never realize that and you will survive. But there is a precipice and I like to point that you can fall through. Good. Are you still with me guys? So you understood that I just showed you how to verify um, using, using one line of thinking that uh, logarithms do exist for the exponential function, for the natural exponential function e to the x, right? You can verify that they exist for, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna do it right now, let's move on, but you can verify they exist for all numbers bigger than zero. I just verified that they are, uh, they exist for all numbers um, bigger than one. So logarithm of every number bigger than one, if it's base e, exists. Yes? Of course, guys, interesting question that we will consider is how do I uh, calculate what is log base E of anything? Of course, uh, you always have it in the back of your mind. How do you, I actually calculate it? If you press it in your calculator, what's happening? We figured what's happening, I hope, with root, although I made some mistake, I have to look at it again, um, you know.
So here is the situation. So I hope you understand guys that there are reasons to believe why a logarithm is, uh, it exists. It's not just, uh, it's just not a way, not a name in vain. Actually something, Elazar, you lost consciousness, you're black. Okay. Do you see? Guys, how many of you understood how I argued uh, uh, line number one? A to the power of log base A M N is A to the power of log base A M plus log base A N. Have you understood it? How many of you think you have understood my more uh, sophisticated uh, uh, idea? So write S yes or something, right? The, the, the more the, the comment that I made about e to the x and intermediate value theorem and uh, the proof of existence, at least one line of it uh, for exponential functions. Write as yes if you, if you think you understood it. Okay, just one person. Right. So I guess you did not, right? Well, can I, I, I tried. After class, uh, if you're interested, I can say more. So the logarithm here is the same because, uh, so for one, it's just a unique power. Now it's your turn, guys. Could you please uh, prove this property uh, and tell me how you do that. So that logarithm uh, base A of M divided by N is log base A of M minus log base A of N. Okay, Safa, it looks fine. I'll go over that in a moment. Can we watch that video real quick? This one uh, later, I don't know what it is. It looks interesting. Yes. Yes, I have too many cats myself. Nicole, so you're dead. That link, which link? 
on my feed. Where? Ah, that one. I have no idea. I'll open it, but I'm more easy. I have no idea what it is. Okay, I don't know, guys. Are we ready? How do we solve this? Well, very simply. Look what we can do. So A to the power of log A M divided by N. Could anybody tell me what is that equal to? Very simply, what is that equal to? Simplest. Uh, M over N, thank you so much. Look how simple it is. It's M divided by N, yes? Now, all you have to do is guys, look at it. What is M? M is A log base A of M. And the bottom number is A log base A of N. Now, those are powers of A. And assuming that uh, the laws of exponentiation work, this is a log base a m minus log base a n. So do you see guys that uh, these two powers produce the same result? We have equality there. Yes, these two powers produce the same result, but in real numbers, the powers are unique. So once you get to complex analysis, guys, you feel very disappointed, but this law is no longer true. To begin with, logarithm is a multifunction. It basically, it gives you infinitely many solutions because uh, there are infinitely many powers that uh, give you the right uh, result, the same result, okay? So this is uh, in real analysis, it's nicely true because there is a unique solution. Good. So I try to explain to you how I know that in real numbers there is a unique solution. That was my entire rant about e to the x and power series of it and whatnot. Good. So next, guys, could you help me with this one? Could you tell me how to figure out, uh, sorry, how to figure out this property? Log base A of M to the power of R is R log base A of M. How do you establish that? Please establish this property.
All right, let's see what we have there. Three comments. Exponent becomes base. I don't know. Uh, what, so how do you solve it, guys? The simplest way is you begin here. So you know that uh, a to the power of log base a of m to the power of r equal to, help me, what does that equal to? m to the power of r. And then all you do next, guys, is focus on the m. That's the same as a to the power of log base a m to the power r. And uh, the property of log uh, of powers is that you can multiply powers. You agree? Assuming you, you know the properties of powers, assuming you know that uh, that in general a to the power of x to the power of y equal to a to the x y. Naturally, this is hard to establish, but you know, assuming we know that, then we just multiply the r in here. So this is a r log base a m. And now what do you see guys? They're, they're the same. We see that this and that power give us the same answer because they're equal. And because the power is unique, they must be the same. You see, I'm using the, uh, the fact that the power is supposed to be unique. All right, guys, and now the hardest one of them all, change of basis. How do I change the basis uh, from B to A? So why is that useful to us, guys? Because what logarithm do we trust? We only trust the exponential logarithm, the log base E. I hope you understand it, guys. Not log base 10, not log base 2, only log base E in log base E with trust. Yes? So how do I convert from one logarithm to another? Because if I want to calculate any logarithm, I would like to do that conversion. Um, I would like to do that conversion into, into E. So let's see. So what we have is We begin by b to the power of log base b of m is m. You agree? This is just uh, the number m. And um, I can write this as, uh, I can write this as a to the power of log base a of b. I can change b, guys. You see what I do? I want to change the power from b, uh, from, uh, b to, the, to b the, to the power of a. So, here I have this expression. Now I take B and I replace it by A log base A of B. Can you see that it's the same uh, as uh, this expression? And so what do I have then? I have that uh, uh, this is O equal to M. And uh, this part is equal to A to the power of log base AB times log base B of M. And this uh, is equal to log base AM. So what I have is that log base AB times log base BM is log base AM. And I, I'm solving for this one. Log base B of M is then log base A of M divided by log base A of B. So for example, if I want to calculate, this is what this is saying. If I want to calculate log base two of seven, I, uh, I can actually, because I know log base E, I can calculate it as log base e of seven divided by log base e of two. So I, I can carry conversion. I can describe every other logarithm in terms of the logarithm of e, which I know exists. Do you understand? So that allows me to quickly describe every other logarithm because in essence, there is only one. Amazing, right?
And now guys, we are going to, of course, take derivatives of uh, logarithmic functions. So recall uh, how we try to take the derivative of how we try to take the derivative of, uh, of uh, two to the X before. Two to the X, the derivative was by definition, uh, two to the X plus H minus two to the X. And we reasoned it's two to the X times two to the H minus one over H, which is approximately two to the X times 0 0.696. But we can actually now calculate that limit, guys. We can actually figure out what is uh, this limit. We did not know how to do that, right? We, we, what is the limit as, as uh, h goes to zero of let's say two to the h minus one over h. Before that, we just kind of estimated it but with a calculator by plugging in 0 0.01 minus one divided by 0 0.01. Yes, we use the calculator to estimate it, but what is that limit? How can I obtain it better? Well, let's try to take the derivative of two to the X again, guys. Could you tell me please, what would you have preferred if you had your wish? Would you replace the two by what number? Of course, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I am going to write a derivative that I like more. So it's going to be e, but if it's e, then it's e to the power of what guys? e to the power of log base e of two to the x. Which is called, uh, you are correct to notice guys, because it's such an important logarithm, log base, uh, log base E of X is simply referred to as ln X. This is the name of this function. It's, uh, so that means log base E of X, okay? Same thing. So this is guys E, we need to take the derivative of this function, the derivative of E ln of two to the X. Now observe that I can take this power guys and drop it down. So this is, that I will need to take the derivative of ln of two times X. Yes? The derivative of ln of two times x. And what's the derivative of that? Would anybody help me? e to the ln of, well, careful. So it's just a constant. The ln of two is just a number. Log base e of two, this is just a number. So the answer is uh, the original function. It's the exponential times ln two. It, it is very similar to the derivative of e to the five x. It would be, it's, a, it's chain rule, e to the five x times five. So ln two is, is like that five. Yes. And what do we get here guys? 
So look at this expression. This is original function, two to the x. So it's two to the x times a line of two. Right, look at it. This, is, uh, this expression is two to the x. So it's two to the x ln two. And this limit, can you see it guys? This limit is actually a ln of two. We can actually give it a name. The limit of two to the h minus one over, over h is actually just a ln of two. You understood how that happened, guys? Try to tell me what is the derivative of three to the x. Carry out the calculation, tell me what's the derivative of three to the x and make sure to get all the steps. Uh, Alessandra, there is a mistake. Yes, very good. Safa, very good. Three to the X is not quite right. Guys, think about it. Yes. The idea is very simple, guys. What do you want to see instead of three to the X? Good, Jamil. What do you want to see instead of three to the X, guys? It's just wishful thinking. You want to see e to some power, right? We know how to differentiate that. So we, we say e to the power of e, ln uh, three to the X. And we take the derivative of that, clear? Guys, this first step, everyone understands why I did it. I know very e well how to differentiate. I have chain rule and I know how to differentiate e to the power of something, yes? Now, ln, has the property that you can drop x. Do you agree? So that's derivative of e to the power x ln three, where ln three is a constant. Yes? And what is the derivative of that, guys? It's just like, it's just like you think of it, ln is just a number, it's like, uh, a number times x. The derivative of a number times x, that's the slope of x. It's just uh, that number. So it is e x ln 3 times ln 3, which is, now what is this? This is the original function. So it's 3 to the x. You see? It's 3 to the x times ln 3. Good. And what we just now established, guys, is we just established that uh, that 
ln3 is the limit where h goes to 0 of 3 to the h minus 1 over h. And in general, the derivative of a to the x will be the derivative of e x ln a, which will be e x ln a times ln a, which is a to the x ln a. Okay. We, for example, for example, the derivative of e to the x, we can say it's e to the x ln e, but ln e is log base e of e, which is just one. Yes? What do I need to raise e by to get e? The answer is one. So I have a general formula for how to differentiate exponential functions. Okay, now help me guys uh, carry out the following calculations. Tell me what's the derivative of five to the power of secant x. Safa, uh, there is there is more happening here. It's five to the secant x. All right, great, Jeffrey. Very good. And Safa, yes, you corrected yourself, good. So the answer, guys, uh, how do I take derivative of five to something? Derivative of five to something is five to something times ln. Good, so the derivative here is five to secant x times ln of five, but times the derivative of secant, which is secant x tangent x. You see that? Basically, it, when I have derivative of a to something, the derivative of the outer function is always a to something times uh, ln of that something. That's very nice. Now do uh, b. It's two to the power of x squared times x cubed. Please take the derivative of that.
Moshe, something is off. Yes, Alpha, you're right. Uh, no trouble. And the answer to this question, guys, is what? The derivative of 2 to the x squared, it's 2 to the x squared times ln 2 times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x times x cubed plus, don't bother this function, and take the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. Yes, yeah, so the answer is 2 to the x squared times ln 2 times 2x to the power of 4 plus 2 to the x squared times 3x squared. You can, if you want to factor something out, it's all not important. Uh, you can factor out x squared. So you can have uh, 2 to the x squared times x squared. And here you have ln of 2 multiplied by 2x squared plus 3. You can write it like this if you want to. Good. Next question is C, derivative of secant of five to the power of X. Correct, Erin. Yep, Moshe, good. And uh, what else was there? Yes, uh, good. Good, Alessandra. You see guys how you do that very simply. What's the derivative of secant? Derivative of secant is secant tangent. Yeah? Multiplied by the derivative of uh, five to the x, which is five to the x ln five. Now do the last one, do number d please.
Okay. All right, so far that looks good. Okay, Sarah, let's see. Correct, Sarah. All right, so you understand the idea, guys. It's a bit tedious. All it is is just what's the derivative of tangent? The derivative of tangent is a secant squared 3 to the x times the derivative of the inner function, which is 3x ln3 plus the derivative of 3 to the tangent is is 3 to the tangent x times ln of 3 times derivative of tangent which is secant squared x okay guys so it's it's tedious to write it but you should get it you should be able to get it if such questions uh, are important for the final exam it should, it should take you a few moments to figure it out. Understand? So it's not a question. It's something, whoop, you can quite uh, fast. Uh, you can solve it very, very rapidly. And that finishes uh, this lecture. Now, as promised, I hope it works this time. You see, uh, when I teach this class, I don't know whether it's my inborn sadism or whether it's that you're going to university. Uh, this is what I am reminded of. Not this. What of that? So regarding this video, uh, somebody asked, how did I uh, find it? I did not, one of you sent it to me knowing exactly what might tickle me. And uh, in fact, uh, I wonder why such a silly thing entertained me, but it does tremendously, perhaps also because that is what I will be imagining when I'm grading your exams. What got me really laughing is how happy it was to get a job, uh, you know, having passed the proficiency exam to be operating a forklift. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that, I mean, I, I was laughing terribly, uh, but I saw it already too many times, you understand, right? So. <laughs> Implicit differentiation. Yeah, I will send all of you the link. Now I hope you have the energy to understand what is implicit differentiation, guys. 
So even uh, some uh, even revolutionary thinkers like Martin Luther believed that the earth was flat and it is just commonsensical. Now, why would anybody believe that the earth is flat? Because guys, they confuse the stunt double, the linear approximation or the planar approximation, yes, with the actual surface. Do you remember what it means for a function to be differentiable or for a surface to be differentiable, guys? A surface or a curve is differentiable. Let's begin with curve. A curve is differentiable if zooming in on that curve will eventually make it look like a straight line. A surface is differentiable if it starts to look like a plane. You understand? And up close, you cannot distinguish one from the other. Good. So this is the situation here, guys. We uh, are dealing with, for example, let's begin with the one dimensional version of planet Earth with a circle. And let's zoom in at a point on the circle. Do you think the moon landing is real or fake? Me? I don't think about it. Hmm. So uh, this is the point. Uh, by the way, I made a mistake. X squared plus Y squared 25. This point, uh, it's not 5, 5. It's really 5 over root 2, 5 over root 2. Yes? Make sure that you understand this is uh, not right. But aside from that, all wonderful. The Sputnik was fake. How dare you, Elazar? How dare you insult me? Okay, good. So we zoom at this point and uh, we should see a, a tangent line. Even though, guys, even though the circle does not pass the vertical line test, as you can see, um, the vertical line intersects the circle in two points, a horizontal line intersects the circle in two points. Yes? But uh, that means that the circle is not y a function of x or x a function of y. However, locally, it is. Do you see if I look at this top box, I don't look at the full object, which I don't need to look at since I'm only zooming at one point. We do have that y is a function of x and we can in fact solve for that y. Here is uh, basically we want to know the tangent, the slope of the tangent line here. So method one is to do that explicitly. So I need to obtain the formula, the function. So I have x squared plus y squared is 25 which means that y squared is 25 minus x squared. And then when I take the square root, y could either be plus the square root or minus the square root. You agree? And I pick y being the plus since uh, I am in the positive y axis region. Yes? So my function, look at it, what I have. y of x is root of 25 minus x squared. When I take the derivative of that function, what do I obtain? I obtain one over two root of 25 minus x squared times minus two x by chain rule. Agreed? And uh, when I cancel things up, look at it. I get minus x over root of 25 minus x squared. And do you see that this expression is just y? Look at it, root of 25 minus x squared is my original function. So my slope is given as minus x divided by y plugging in the point, not the point five, five, but the point root five over root five. Over root two. So I have minus five over root two, over five over root two. And that is equal to one. Yes. Good. So then uh, minus one. So we have that the slope here is minus one. Very believable. Here is method two. 
Method two is we do that implicitly. And how do we do that implicitly? Uh, we pretend that we carried out the step where we obtain uh, what's the formula for the function. That's very important, guys. So do you see what I do here? I have x squared plus y of x squared. Do you see what's the y of x? The y of x is that previous formula which I did not obtain. It's like I imagine instead of that y is the formula that would result if I were clever enough and solved for it. Yes, it's that function. So when I take the derivative of left expression and right expression, what do I get? On the left, the derivative of x squared is 2x, but the derivative of y squared is 2y, y prime. It's chain rule, the derivative of the square and the function is inside multiplied by the derivative of the function. Are you with me? Derivative of 25 is zero. Now I just simply solve, look at it. I move the 2x across and I divide by uh, 2y and I obtain the same formula minus x over y which upon plugging, um, uh, it should be, upon plugging the points, uh, the points five root two, five root two, will give me the same slope. There is a mistake here, but uh, ignore that. It, it will give me still the, the answer minus one. Did you understand? You understand the implicit idea, guys? I just cut a corner. I pretended that I actually solved and obtained a formula, but, uh, and, and then I just use implicit differentiation because I mean, I cannot differentiate Y if I don't know its formula. So I pretend to do that. Here is where I pretend to do that. Here is uh, the next uh, example, guys. Find an equation of the tangent line through the point one comma two for the curve determined by the equation y squared plus four x squared equal to four x y. By the way, I will let you go at uh, 750. If you have to leave earlier, you can, but uh, I will borrow the five minutes back. Entertainment comes at a cost. So you can solve it uh, explicitly or implicitly up to you guys how you do that. Y squared plus four X squared equal to four X Y. I want the equation or an equation of the tangent line at the point one, two. And this is the formula defining the curve. The equation of the line, please. Nice. Moshe, it's no trouble, guys. Uh, it's the, the lectures are for your benefit, or at least so I hope. All right, guys, let's do it together. Let's do method one explicitly. Yes. 
So what can you do, guys? Move the 4xy across, and do you recognize this equation? y squared minus uh, 4xy plus 4x squared equal to 0 is a perfect square. So it's y minus 2x squared equal to 0, which forces y minus 2x to equal 0, which forces y to be equal to 2x. So this equation identifies the line y equal to 2x, the simplest possible thing you can imagine. It's just a line. And therefore, slope everywhere is what number? What's the slope everywhere? Guys, what's the, what's the tangent line at 1, 2? What's the tangent line, please? No, that's the slope. The tangent line is uh, 2x. What's the tangent line to a line? It's the same line. Nothing needs to be done whatsoever. Now, we could have applied implicit differentiation. Suppose we did not solve this problem, but we look at it and uh, uh, pretend that we have. So y is y of x, but we suppress, so we don't have to write it. We suppress the x here. But you remember that there is a formula instead of y, which only involves x. So what's the derivative of this side? It is two times the function times the derivative of the function. Plus eight x equal, and here we apply product rule. Do you see where the product rule comes? The derivative of four x is four times the second function intact plus four x y prime. Very important guys. Do you understand what I'm doing here? Why do I have the prime over y? In the first method, it was revealed. First method told me, uh, find a formula. Y is replaced by a formula involving only x's. But if I did not carry that step, then I can only say y prime, nothing more. Good? And so what, do, what happens, guys? Then I, I am going to group together. Everything that has a y prime, I will bring to the left. And everything that does not, I will bring to the right. And here is what I have. I can then from the left part factor a y prime. And I have that uh, 2y minus 4x times y prime is 4y minus 8x. And so y prime is 4y minus 8x over 2y minus 4x. Do you see what it is, guys? Do you see that numerator is twice as long as the denominator? And so the slope is 2. You can see divide it out and you see that the slope is two. So uh, if the slope is everywhere two, that right away tells you the same solution. The slope can only be the same number if we're dealing with the line. Do you all remember that guys? Uh, every curve that's differentiable, it's like a sequence of microscopic line segments. And those line segments have different slopes. That's why the derivative is in general a function of X. But if the derivative does not exhibit X, that means that all the line segments are aligned together to form a global line. Okay. So the next equation we will talk about on Thursday, I suppose it will be long. You are dismissed. Congratulations. Goodbye. Unless you want to stay and uh, hear uh, something else. I have a question regarding the final exam. Could we submit in to you, maybe email you the work that we did? For instance, if we get it wrong. No, of course you submit your work. Uh, you put your work and your answer and you do it neatly and nicely so I can see it. Uh, all, 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 everything included. Uh, of course you get partial credit. Just make sure to type your, name your, uh, your paper this way. So E space, last name, space, first name. Yes, mm -hmm. because it will, I will arrange it alphabetically in, uh, in uh, folders and it will be easier for me to grade. When is our second midterm? If you are very lucky, Nicole, uh, you might not have a second midterm, just the final. So we shall see. It will be very close. If you have it very close to the day of the final. So kind of when we are approaching, the way I used to have it, it's like I like to give very light breakfast, very uh, well intermediate lunch and tremendously heavy dinner. 
which means once it's the final, I mean, you're choking, uh, as you're choking on your third exam, you know that the final is the second dish. Good? But uh, since uh, we are, uh, since we are, um, you know, doing it through online and things are kind of slower somehow online with me, then um, we'll see what happens. If you are very lucky, I will feel bad. I would think, oh, my poor students are not having enough time or I don't want to grade the exams, which is very true. And so then just to be uh, this exam and the final. But the final will be very, very strict. Good? So prepare for it, guys. Then with the final, I cannot do much about it. It's just, it's the departmental final. It's what they want. All right, uh, if you are leaving, then goodbye. Enjoy your evening. It's beautiful outside. Goodbye, guys.